In this module, we are exploring the use of consensus research methods in educational technologies research. And there are three main consensus research methods. There's the nominal uh, group process, the consensus development panel, and the Delphi study. So each of these have um, a lot of similarities, but also a couple of key differences that we're going to go through. But essentially they rely upon uh, groups of experts coming together or communicating with each other and coming up with a consensus on a research question. So it's different from survey type research uh, because it relies specifically on the expertise of panel members, whereas survey research tends to rely upon the population being studied in order to gain an understanding of what's occurring. So the first of these approaches is the nominal group approach. So this um, involves bringing together a group of experts, normally between five and 10. Um, if you have too few, then you don't get a diversity of perspectives. And if you have too many, it becomes unwieldy as a process. And then there are four steps that um, the group go through. Now there's normally a moderator who manages the process. And each expert um, explores the research question that is being undertaken. Let's say, what is going to be the most likely educational technology that has the biggest impact upon education in the next five years? Uh, so with that question, the experts each consider what their response to that would be either as a solution to a problem or, in this case, a prediction of um, an outcome. And then the experts submit their ideas to the moderator. Now, sometimes this also includes readings and looking at the literature and things of that nature. But at some point, it's then in the second stage, it's submitted to the moderator. And then the moderator reads out the different approaches that are being presented by the experts. So the experts don't present their own approaches. It's done anonymously through a moderator. Then in the third stage, um, discussion occurs around each of the approaches that have been put forward as to their strengths and weaknesses. And then in the fourth stage, there's normally an anonymous voting on which of the approaches, solutions, whatever, is the one that is going to be agreed upon as the consensus approach. So by going through those four steps, um, a consensus is then gained, hopefully, as to which is the um, best solution to the research question that's under exploration. Now, there are challenges with this approach. Um, probably the largest is around the composition of the expert panel, uh, particularly in relation to bias. So, for example, if it was an all-male panel and the question had some relationship to um, involving gender, then obviously there would be an inherent bias. Um, if it was all very experienced members, that again can have some bias. And by its nature, expertise tends to draw upon um, a level of experience. But that also tends to place them in a particular demographic group, generally older, um, which may not necessarily have perspectives on issues relating to younger people. And of course, and then there's general racial biases and other uh, biases that can be in place when you have a small number of people representing large populations. So the larger the number of experts, the less bias, um, but at some point that becomes unwieldy for the process. So normally there is an inherent um, selection to incorporate as many different um, perspectives as possible. So having equal numbers of males and females, um, a range of expertise levels or a range of experience levels. They should all be experts but that doesn't mean, mean they all necessarily have to be towards the end of their careers, for example. 
and other attempts to reduce bias. So that's the nominal group process and we'll discuss that further in the tutorial.